I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you watching again. And if you've been following our sequence here, we're in our fourth visit with Grant Palmer, and I probably our last, but I sure appreciate you coming and sharing your story and let me just kind of remind everybody about two websites mormonthink.com and grantpalmer.net and also if you want to watch extended uh, stories of, of Grant's, uh, Grant's story and his interviews he's been on with John DeLynn in mormonstories.org and also with sacredgroves.net and you find those and he's also published two books, Insider's View of Mormon Origins, very influential book and uh, a terrific read, and also a, an excellent book called The Incomparable Jesus. As the introduction indicates as we talk about this, we have a joyful message that we want to share, and the joyful message is about Jesus, isn't it? Just that uh, Mormonism is, uh, is built on, uh, I know we talk about it in terms of bad news, good news. There's a lot of what we call, I call bad news in the church, the polygamy, the masonry, and the temple rites, and and uh, the Book of Mormon and Book of Abraham. But there is good news, and maybe we could spend just a few minutes before I get into some other miscellaneous topics. But what would you say to that? Uh, what is the good news that Mormons and Christians alike should should be thinking about? Well, I think more more Jesus Christ, less less about everything else in the LDS Church. And uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Joseph Smith doesn't matter. It, I got it down to four words, and the LDS Church has so much that they want to focus on <clears throat> their history. If you go down to this museum down downtown, the whole first floor it's elaborately done. It's all about uh, the Mormon story from New York clear to the West. And then you go upstairs, and it's all about the presidents of the church. <laughs> and then tucked back in a corner, they have an exhibit on Jesus art. I think it's art that it, it struck me as... LDS artists, probably. that have... Donated over the years. Yeah. But I thought, that is not the message that if I... I, I would be concerned because the earliest church is concerned about Christ is is the founder and the foundation of the church. Yeah. But someone visiting that museum, which I did last week for two hours, I came away thinking he was an afterthought. Yeah. I get that feeling in the temple too, that Jesus was an afterthought. He's kind of a, yeah. he's certainly not very important. And in sacrament meeting, the, the talks are, I always I used to tell our bishops, I'd say, uh, uh, you know, when you assign someone to talk about love, talk about Jesus' Jesus's love. love. <laughs> or if you yeah. talk about prayer, I remember asking my high priest once, I says, what, what did Jesus ask for most in the prayers that we have about him? Not one of them could say, he asked to have the Holy Spirit. And I thought, well, isn't that interesting that Jesus, who's so much further along than we are, Nice. would ask the Father for the strength of the Holy Spirit to be with him in, in his ministry as he went down from the mountain yeah. or, or 
out in the desert or whatever. And so, and if, and if you got one to do it, there are bishops in the church who really do put it forth this. more. They more really do. Effort, yeah. but my, you know, I've lived all over the world. I've, you know, yeah. uh, and uh, I, I just don't see, he, he, Jesus just kind of falls through the cracks. Yeah. And in Sunday school, you get 30, 35 minutes. So, so we don't really talk about him in sacrament meeting. And when I mean talk about it, I mean his life and ministry. Yeah, not, actually, not, know, not just talk about the concept. We know and, more about the church history, like you're saying. We know more about 1820 and yeah, 1830 yeah, than we do. Yeah, most LDS know about the journey from New York to Ohio yeah. to Missouri to uh, Illinois to Salt Lake. Then we do. Jesus. But ask them to to list the uh, the four or five uh, sections of Jesus's ministry and where he went. No. Yeah. Uh, um, so the sacrament meeting, uh, we hear talks about forgiveness and love and prayer and what have you. And home teaching and uh, temple. A lot, a lot of the, tithing. The, <laughs> the organizational needs of the church yeah. is really focused and the yeah. beauty of the restoration. But Jesus himself and the, this book on the incomparable Jesus, uh, I think he says 40 times in the four gospels. Come unto me, listen to me, yeah. do this, do that. Follow me. <laughs> Follow me, yeah. And, and he's, really, uh, he's really into that, and I think we haven't taken him seriously enough. So the sacrament meeting's kind of that way. And then uh, in Sunday school, you get 35 minutes, and generally, if, if you're studying the New Testament, they'll quote a verse. <laughs> I witnessed this. They'll quote uh, John 3, 7, uh, you must be born again. But they won't go on what it means to be born again as taught by John in 1 John right. or Peter yeah. in 2 Peter or Jesus it's a standalone in the Sermon scripture. on the Mount. Yeah. They'll go to, quote, Abinadi and uh, Amulek or Alma in the Book of Mormon. Yeah. And so even though that's the, stu the, the, the subject of study, they're soon into the Book of Mormon and then a couple of commentaries by LDS general authorities, and then there's no time, the 35 minutes. And then they go on to the next concept. Yeah. So there's not a, a lot of, of time for questions. I have, My wife came home and says that, the, that they had made a plea. The church says allow more time for questions because these people have been there 60 years. They pretty well know what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. It's not a, a scintillating learning experience. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Repeat lessons. Uh. Yeah, it's it's and so the Sunday school doesn't get much, and then the priesthood, meeting is is about presidents of the on, church yeah presidents yeah i went through um i went through in, in the incomparable jesus i did my own study of an eight-year period eight years i remember you reading this and it's something like 200 lessons and i yeah. figure about uh 10 percent are directly on jesus 20 of them yeah most yeah. of them they 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 use the same topics year in and year out they just yeah different examples and different Tithing's always in there, missionary works in there, uh, that kind of thing. So you come away and you say, I'd like a, a, a more of a, J a Jesus-centered experience. And, yeah. and, and then you get into holidays. They're not too hot on, not too big on Easter. They're not too big on... Uh, I think uh, if a person starts noticing it, they will notice that, uh, yes. an LDS person, they'll notice that the topics are very not, not very Christ-centered. But a lot of people, they've only known the LDS Church, so they really don't know what they're missing. That's if they, true. If they go over yeah. to a good Protestant church or a, a minister who focuses on Jesus, then they'll see the difference. The praising and the teaching and so yeah. on. Yeah. You know, it's interesting. There are two things that I mention is um, the young children's choir at Christmas time mm. was repeating Isaiah 9-6. And they left out the words, Everlasting Father. You know, for unto us a child is born. Really? Unto us a son is given. And the mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And Theologically Elder, incorrect. Yeah, and LDS. Elder Holland did the same thing really? in General Conference. I did not know that. In his last talk. Yeah. Another interesting thing, someone visited the uh, diorama, or whatever you call that, at the visitor center for the different places Jesus went to during his lifetime. It's kind of a panorama mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. with lights and so on. They left out the cross. They go right from the they go right from the garden of Gethsemane to the empty tomb. And they left the cross out. I just wondered what your position or if your thoughts were about now as a Christian about the cross and Gethsemane. 
Well, I, I don't, I've never been one to make too big a deal out of it. I know that a lot of evangelicals do. I, I just think it was definitely on his mind in Gethsemane, but it's the cross. This cross is, 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 the, is the major right. work. But it's certainly on his mind when Luke says he sweat as it were, great, great drops, drops of blood. blood. I mean, there's got to be a reason for yeah, that. A lot of suffering. But he, he tells Peter, he says, don't you know that I do need to to drink the cup when he when he cuts off yes. uh, Malchus's ear and so we know that the shed blood is really what the what the whole atonement or the whole crucifixion was about uh, and it was what the animals had been doing and or the people the priests had been doing to the animals in the temples all those years and I just wondered what your thoughts were on well the atonement is a big subject that's a big subject and, isn't uh, it <laughs> For me, Jesus, Jesus, uh, Isaiah 53, 10. It's too bad we can't read that. Oh, in, I've in got the, one, right? In, in the NIV is especially good. Do you have an NIV? I don't. I don't know which one this is. but. And if you want to know why he did what he did, Isaiah is very... 53, 10. Yeah. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed and he shall prolong you know, his days. No, that's 53.10. Yeah. It was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. I thought, wow. 53.10. You're getting to the heart of it. Oh, and here it said to bruise him. I guess it's a difference, but yeah. this is the... Uh, and you remember when, when uh, Malchus's ear is, is cut off? Yeah. Jesus says to Peter, he says, uh, you don't understand. I, this is the will of the Father, yeah. that I suffer and die. Yeah. Just like it says right there, the yeah. will of Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. You think, why would any parent do that? I have all these friends that don't like that. <laughs> But I've, I've written something on the atonement. Eventually, it'll be on the website. Oh, good. But uh, GrantPalmer.net. It's in the process of hopefully being published. So, if if I put it on my website, they won't publish it. That's where I'm at on that. Oh, well, that's too bad. But <laughs> he's carrying out scripture. That's why, when when um, Zechariah predicts Isaiah, Zechariah, and the psalmist, Psalms 22 talks about that he must die. He will be pierced in his hands and his feet. Yeah. And uh, Well, and Hebrews says that same thing. The shadow of the, the animals being killed is just a precursor for the, yeah. the shed blood of Jesus. And P Peter's told by Jesus, he says, look, uh, you, you don't understand. I mean, get me behind me. You, I've got to do this. This, is, yeah. this has been predicted. Yeah. And there's a reason for it. And I like to think that Jesus did it... Uh, the father wanted him, he's, he's turning over all judgment to the son, and he wants, this is Grant Palmer talking, he wants to make sure that Jesus is going to do it for the proper motivations. Mm. He wants to the utmost. Okay. Now, I think he knew what he was going to do, but yeah. I think that's what he's doing. And Jesus goes ahead and, uh, and follows through. Jesus, this isn't my, not my will, but the, thy, thy will. Be, thy yeah. will be done. And I think it's in uh, one of the Paul's writings. He says that Jesus pled with the Father to avoid that hour. But the Father says no. If it be possible, but it, yeah. it wasn't. It wasn't. So well, the Father let him feel the full weight of, the, of, of humanity's sins and sorrows and troubles. Yeah. Why hast thou forsaken me? And I think the reason he did it is because he's turned all judgment over the son and he wants him to feel the full weight of that responsibility. Wow. That's a good insight. Well, I, like I hope that. it is. We'll see. Yeah. So you're going to have that. I've been trying on. to make more sense out of the atonement and some of my friends uh, have strange, they don't <laughs> think there's any need for an atonement. There's no such thing as sin, therefore you don't need a Savior to save you from the sin. And a, and, and a glorious Father wouldn't require His Son to die. And I'm trying to answer those questions. 
do they even question Jesus as, as a Messiah or as yes, a Christ? Yes, all of yeah. the above. Yeah. And we, we're getting more hostility towards Christianity than, uh, than when I grew up, I, at wow. least that I'm aware of. Hmm. The internet has, uh, has, has caused that. Yeah, you mentioned the internet, and let me cover just now a couple of miscellaneous things. You said that the Bible is to the Catholic Church as the internet is to the LDS Church. Yep, everything that had been nailed down is coming up. Yeah, <laughs> so here comes the English Bible and people start reading other than the Latin and realize that the Catholic Church is uh, different than, yes. than the Bible. And Mormons today, you know, the to, they need to get a modern Bible, get the NIV or, or a revised standard. Uh, well, we revision. have learned something in the last 400 years probably, yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely, and I think that's important for, for better understanding. Anything you can get is a teaching tool, but I had a friend that, w that was not allowed to use the NIV in no, his Sunday school classes. Just King James, right? Yeah. They like the King James, as yeah. you know. Well, and the that's King my James Bible, is, too. But the, the King James is, is about 3% a year is, is being flaked off and people aren't using it. So the church, Elias Church uses the King James to... Uh, uh, because their doctrine is interpretations are, are more tied to that version. If you really use the Greek and the current, yeah, yeah. then it does so much. Yeah. Well, yeah. here, look, one I read said bruised, and you said crushed. Yes. I mean, there's a little difference there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, you had a debate with Walter Martin. Oh, my goodness. That was a long time ago. And were you on the other side of the. Were you defending the church at that point? Absolutely. Sure. Uh, what year was that? Do you remember at all? This would have been while I was in Whittier, California. Okay. Would have been in between uh, 1970 and 80, maybe? 70, 70, 71, 72. Okay. And, uh, and how'd that and go? Some of my students says, oh, here's Walter Martin. He's, uh, he's taking on Mormons at the law. law. I forget the name of the towns right by Whittier. Law... Horrendous. Alhambra? La, La, Mer, La Merada. I don't know. <laughs> something like that. Okay. Church. And so we went. And I looked on the back table and it had the, his book, uh, Kingdom of the Cults, I think. Yeah, yeah. Kingdom and, of the uh, Cults. Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh day. And he had some Mormons. missionaries up there on the front row that he was chewing up and spitting out. Oh, yeah. And he's quite theatrical. And anyway, yeah. During the question and answer, I raised my hand and I says, I noticed that you say that you, you know, uh, uh, you, you're, you're representing Mormonism, as, but in the kingdom of the cults, I looked through it, you don't have any references from the Elias Standard Works of the Church. You have quotes from Brigham Young, you have this and this and that. So that's how I got started. And the next thing I know, I was up there debating him. <laughs> and it went on quite a while. I, I ended up distributing, I think, three or four Book of Mormons. And uh, felt pretty good about yourself there. Felt, yeah, I felt pretty good about it. And I even invited him, and this is a real no-no yeah. for an institute director to invite him to, to, your, to speak at, at the point. Friday Forum, Noon Forum. Kind of open forum thing. Or, and you know. of course, I was very confident that we could handle anything he could yeah. throw he, at us. Did he do it? He did. Oh. And so, you know, it, he Went was... okay, huh? I mean, we parted friends and... But I, I, I considered it a victory because I had stood up for the church and, and, and uh, you know, I mean, I, I'd say different things. He'd say something about the first vision, that all the churches are abomination in his sight. And I says, well, the Quakers wouldn't have said that. They don't, they don't believe in <laughs> stuff like that. Now you appreciate probably more where he was coming from, I Well, suppose. I didn't know who he was. I've since found out more about the man and... I don't know if we've got enough time, but and I know these are more, some of those sensitive things that we were talking about, and maybe in just a, a word or two, you could just, you were trying to sell a home, and a, a voice or an Im impression came to you. Do you remember that? And maybe I'll, I'll help you if, if these are a bunch of them that you've said over the years, but it, it, he said, I'd, I'll do it for f friendship. Yeah, I built it. Two million dollar house in the oh, <laughs> I in, didn't know that. In nineteen, uh, Boyd Packer, Boyd Packer's ward, no less. Oh, really? And it was finished right in two thousand eight or 
the, right when the, the onset economy of, turned yeah. down. And I had been lowering the price and always had good luck with God in prayer, but he, he wouldn't answer. Finally, I just says, well. This was going on for like 21 months, right? 23 were, months. I was paying, paying eight, 8, 000 a little, month. just a hair under $8,000 a month just on the interest on that, on that loan. Yeah. And the homeowner's fees and the insurance and all that. And I was running out of money. <laughs> and uh, after 23 months, you, you do the math. Yeah. And so, anyway, I, I just went to him. I says, well, uh, I can't get through this glass ceiling. I don't know why you've answered me in the past. I don't know what's going on. And finally, he just says, I'll, just a set sentence says, I'll do it for friendship. <laughs> And I thought, do it for friendship. I've never heard anyone <laughs> ever get an answer to prayer that I'm going to do it for friendship. I've heard all kinds of reasons that's, why. But that's what came to you. And then I started looking up. Abraham was the friend of God because he believed in God. Yeah. And I lay down my life for, 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 for my, my friends. friends. You are my friends. Sure. And it's, it's just so tender to me, so touching to me. It's still... Uh, and all I can tell you is that that I sold that house, a guy came by with a million and a half dollars cash. So I It's like three days later, right? I remember at least. And he closed, we closed within 11 days from the time of that prayer, that answer. After 21 months. And I've been trying to sell that thing. I've been coming months. down on the price, you know. Yeah. The interesting thing about God, he never he never completely says, oh, this is a slam dunk. This is me and you don't have to have any faith. He, all, he never removes the faith. Yeah. So you get to choose. <laughs> Did I sell this because of him, yeah. which I choose to believe? Sure. But you can always say. Well, it just would have. Yeah. Would've, would've he he always that. leaves it that way. It's never a slam dunk. Yeah. But for me, it was huge. <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, gosh, there's so much here, and we're actually running out of time again. You asked a couple of questions that I just thought were so penetrating. Will the environment of the LDS Church bring me closer to Jesus? And the second one, would studying Mormon history make me a better Mormon? I mean, those are so penetrating and thoughtful. Why don't you say why you think they are? Well, I, <laughs> I mean, I don't think it would make a Mormon a better Mormon to study Mormon history. No, because, look... Some people can take history and some people can't. Yeah. And the LDS Church has good reason to be afraid of their history. They milk it for everything they got. If you want to go down to that museum like I did last week, you will have a, 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 a warm feeling. A pioneer pride. But there, there is a, I, I went with another historian and we thought there's at least a hundred questions here that they haven't focused on, haven't answered it, haven't told the rest of the story. And that's the way they want it. They they milk history, but they're deniers of history. Yeah, and even with the essays, they're still deniers of history. They they only come clean to the degree that they feel they have to, to be at least f somewhat fair. And they if never tell if that'll work, then so be it. I guess one thing that probably a lot of people would like to know: Are you still meeting with that general authority and the mission? I president? haven't talked with him for a a, a year and a half. Was well, uh, it going anywhere? No, sense. I, I met with him eight or nine times. It's a, it was a mutual benefit. He wanted to learn yeah. from me, and I, Learned he has insight him. into the hierarchy that I didn't have, so yeah. it worked out pretty well. Okay, another question. How much do the general authorities know? I always get that question. What do you think they really know? They know about right. B.H. Roberts and his presentation, do they? They know about the Sears Stone and polyandry. Well, the very fact they don't want to talk about the foundational claims is what bothered my general authority, my 70. Yeah. They don't want to talk about it. Well, isn't it interesting that the general conference we just had, and I have to admit I didn't hear every word, but I didn't ever get the sense that anybody mentioned the essays. And they've come no. out with 13 essays over the last well, couple of years. according to John DeLynn. And nobody talks about them. People reading the essays are, that are our age, they, they, 
they're wondering if the church is true because they said that's not what we were taught. Yeah, and not even being discussed though at general conference. I mean, they don't no, want them. They don't want, they don't them, want them discussed. What they're doing is feeding them into the seminary and institute. Just for the program. youth more. Yeah, I mean, this, this last talk by uh, Russell Ballard uh, to all CES people, a complete change of course. Now he's telling the teachers Just to study and be aware. To know those essays like the back of your hand and answer the questions. Yeah. Why are they doing that? I don't know, but I would guess it's because about 50% of returned missionaries are leaving the church within five years. And that comes from them, not, not some outside source. Yeah. 45 cents percent. 45%. They don't have a temple recommend after five years. And they get their recommend when they leave the mission field. Yeah. So that's what's going on there. And so they've, they've thought, well, we're sending them out like lambs to the slaughter. They don't know anything. They get hit 10, 15, 20 times, especially in English speaking um, countries and especially in the Western states yeah. by people like you and like me. <laughs> and, and then they go home and think, gee, a lot of people told me that this church is, that I'm peddling isn't what it claims to be. I'm going to take a look. A little shocking, yeah. Yeah, so that's what's going on. So the change of policy, we'll see if it works. Another thing, the Book of Abraham is now being considered an inspired translation rather than an actual translation. Do mm -hmm. you ever see a possibility that the Book of Mormon could move that way? Would that be shocking and, of course, devastating to a lot of people, but... I don't know that don't the church know. is worried about us older people. Do you think no, so? They're no, not, you're it's, right. I they want to they... give this information to the young who to don't know young. any better. Yeah, and to at least prepare them so they can say, well, we've always talked about this. Well, this they, has always been out there. I think they used, uh, Ballard used the word inoculate three times in that CES talk. We want to inoculate you <laughs> so that you won't be blown away when you hear about all this uh, these problems from, from criticisms. Well, Grant, believe it or not, our time's gone. One thing, I, I one comment you did make that I we won't talk about, but you said that I love the church too much. And I know that I love the church. It was my music. It was my life. It was everything. But I, I know now that I know a Jesus completely differently than I did before. I'm a new creature in him. You feel the same way. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yep, and it, it's such a. And good he hasn't feeling. disappointed me. No, I could. I've had experiences where he's shown his support. I I yeah. don't know what to say. I mean. Yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate you so much uh, sharing your story, and I I know we've only scratched the surface, but I appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, thanks so much for being a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Errol. And we'll see you another time on the Ex Mormon Files.